today we are going to be looking into the disappearance of 16-year-old Damien Nettles. Damien Nettles went to a party with his friend Chris Boone on the Isle of Wight in England, telling his parents he'd be home around midnight. After spending a short amount of time at the party, the two boys left to go and buy some cider. After buying the cider, they then started going to a different pub, seeing if they could find one that would let them in. They eventually gave up on that idea and headed to Yorkie's chip shop, but left without buying anything. At around 10.30pm, Chris decided he had had enough and wanted to go home, and Damien told Chris he was going to do the same. They walked together for a bit before parting ways, but instead of walking home, Damien turned around and walked back to Yorkie's chip shop, this time buying chips.
At 11.15, a witness says they saw Damien trying car door handles on a blue Ford Fiesta in the car park of the Harbour Lights pub. Damien was next spotted at a bus stop. He climbed onto the bus, spoke to a driver and then got off again. Damien then walked along the high street for the next three hours, when disappeared from view of the cameras and has not been seen since. The next morning, Damien's parents... Valerie and Ed and Damien's nine-year-old sister Melissa were downstairs eating breakfast whilst waiting for Damien and his 12-year-old brother James to wake up and come downstairs. When Valerie noticed James was up, she asked Melissa to go wake Damien up. When Melissa came back down the stairs, she told Valerie that Damien was not in his room, so Valerie headed upstairs to check herself. When she walked into Damien's room, she could tell the bed had not been slept in the night before. So Valerie decided to call Chris. Chris told Valerie the last time he had seen Damien was the night before when they both split up to head home. She then got in her car and drove around looking for him. When she headed home, she was hopeful that Damien would be there, but he wasn't. So she and Ed decided it was time to contact the police. He was reported missing the afternoon of 3rd of November, when all avenues had been exhausted to locate him. Hampshire police did not take his disappearance seriously and mistakenly listed him as 19 years of age instead of 16. They refused the family's desperate requests for land and air searches and the deployment of search dogs. The family implemented their own searches with the help of friends and visited local businesses to acquire CCTV. When Mrs Nettles phoned the station a few days later for an update, she was told she was hampering the investigation by calling them. Initial missing persons procedures were not implemented, so the case got off to a bad start and critical evidence was lost. Unfortunately, Hampshire Police lost the last CCTV footage of Damien walking along the high street because it was left in the VCR at the station and was recorded over. There has been lots of speculation around what happened to Damien, so now we are going to have a look into these. In November 2011, police searched a house on Marsh Road, Gunnard, where it is rumoured Damien had been beaten to death, wrapped inside a large rug, which was then covered with large plastic bin bags. The search turned up nothing. Some people say that the person responsible, drug dealer, Nicky McNamara, kept the body at the house on Marsh Road, whilst others say they buried the body near a bike track. Officers also searched for Damien's body at Dodna Nature Reserve near Newport, but nothing was found there either. In 2007, a private investigator named Ivor Edwards reached out to Damien's family to offer his services. He attempted to raise a reward to motivate people to come forward, but the police told any businesses that wanted to help that it would not be in the business's best interest. A witness told 
either that he saw Nicky McNamara the afternoon after Damien had gone missing at Marsh Road. I see Nicky McNamara and he's chucking wood into this oil drum, big 45 gallon drum. Oh. Fucking great blaze. This is about half two in the afternoon. He's chucking this wood in, right? I see Nicky go back in, come out with another bit of wood and he was scraping something along the ground. And as he picked it up and, and he scooped it up off the ground, he then flicked it in the fire in the shape of a sleeve. Ivor claims that Shirley Barrett, Nicky McNamara's partner, told him Damien was picked up by Nicky McNamara and another man in Barring Road and that if he repeated that to anyone, she would have Ivor murdered. Chris Boone says that Damien was walking out to pub doors telling people he was looking for his older sister Sarah that night even though he knew his sister was away at university. It's suspected he may have been doing this as a way to get into the pubs. The police suspected that Damien jumped into the Solent and tried to swim across to go and see his sister. A person came forward claiming that they knew that Damien's body was buried in the woodland behind the Gurnard Sailing Club and Damien's friends regularly dig in the area trying to find his body. It is also said by some people that Damien's body was kept at House 18 Fellows Road for three weeks before being dumped or moved elsewhere. In 2010, signed statements were given to the police claiming that Nicky McNamara had made a deathbed confession in 2002 about Damien's disappearance. One of these statements was made by Shirley Barrett, who now denies it. And that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching.